Pet Startup 101 uh, podcast. Thank you for listening. And in this episode, we're going to talk about are you worth your rates? So are you worth the rate that these major corporations are charging for their services? I'm going to give you five ways to show to the customer subconsciously and visually consciously uh, that you really are worth that rate and that you're better than your competition. Uh, Better than your small competition and better than your big corporate competition. Now you're going to beat the big corporate competition in these ways. Number one, education. All your texts should be educated not only on the major products that you use, not only on the products that you have in your shop, they should definitely know that, but they should definitely know they should have a rundown on the available products to the market that the market has, uh, on the products that the customers can buy over the counter. How do they come back? How do they come back that when they're at the customer's house and they open the cabinet and there's stuff under the cabinet there and it has 0.001% chemical and then, of something else, water. Okay? How do they combat that? Education. That's number one. Number two is presentation, the visual. Um, Your appearance. That is very important. Now, I'm not talking about having a fat technician, skinny technician, a technician that's super fit. I am very overweight, but I pride myself in my appearance. So my uniform, it's the same brand as the other uniforms that the other companies use, the other major companies. They use red cap um, shirts or pants, or they use uh, dickies. Uh, But you can go on Amazon, and you can get red cap work shirts, red cap work pants, or dickies. Or you can just go with a a company like Sintest that provides you with the uniforms. But if you're just starting out, you want to you want to look presentable, but you don't want it to put you out of business. Paying this fee every month to get your uniforms laundered, you might you might want to take care of that yourself. So one thing I'm going to tell you about uniforms is when you get these commercial shirts, these work shirts, some of those things don't come off unless you take it to a dry cleaner. So one thing about technicians is they want to buy the uniforms and then they want to wash their clothes on a separate machine. Because maybe the chemicals that may residue that might be on the uniforms, that's a great thing. You're being conscious. You're not mixing it up with your regular clothes. But some of those stains on your shirt, some of the stains on your knees from getting getting down and inspecting and doing uh, exclusion services, which I'm going to talk about in another episode. And you're going to get those stains. They're not going to come off. But when you get it uh, dry clean, it works. So... You might want to invest in dry cleaning, you know, from time to time, get that uniform brand new. That's the second thing, presentation. So make sure you're wearing a belt. I know it sounds crazy, but there are guys out there that they start at a company. They say they forgot their belt or that they hate wearing belts and they're never wearing belts or they wear they wear a belt and the belt's not even tightly worn and the pants are still sagging. So that happens now. A belt, boots. Now, you know, when you're applying chemicals, you should be wearing boots, work boots. And some people are still wearing sneakers. They say, oh, the sneakers are black. They blend in. No one is going to notice. Boots are heavy. They're light boots. They're light boots out there that cost the same as heavier boots. They're not going to be as safe. You're not going to get the steel toe. You might get some light boots that have steel toe. But then guess what? You drop something on there. It's still going to that metal from the steel boot can point down at your toes and chop your toes off. Look it up on YouTube. So invest in the in the in the safe safer boot or avoid the steel toe and just get a light boot without steel toe and just be safe out there. Okay, that's another option. So that number two is your uniform. Number one education. Number two is your uniform. Number three, paperwork. So when you are When you meet a customer or when they ask you for a quote, when they ask you for an estimate, when they 
accept your price and they're waiting for that paperwork. If you're doing it over the phone, you need to have a good program that that emails them. Number one, it emails them quickly. A person doesn't want to accept the service and then wait three hours to receive a bill to receive um, the work order. Hey, thank you for signing up with us. We're going to be there on this day. They don't want to wait three hours for that. Once you're taking their information, you should be putting it in the system then. Or if you're at a stop, you should have a program that has an app and that you can get in your car after you complete that stop and you put that information in right away and then they get that email. Okay? So number one, you can use, these are some options. You can use Square. With Square, you can create customers. Uh, You can um, accept payment. You can send invoices. You can send estimates. And you can book. You can select booking. Now, this is not Square. It's for everyone. Uh, coffee shops use this as a general general credit card processing company. So it's not focused on pest control. Now, there are other programs that you can use. I'm going to say a few right now that you should look into if you're not using a program right now, if you're doing everything on paper. Gorilla Desk, Fieldworks HQ, Pest Pack, WorkWave, which is part of Pest Pack, Pod, uh, Podium. Now, these are just a few that you can Google and go to their site, and they all give between 15 and 30-day free trials, 14 to 30-day free trials. And these companies, they will give you the free trial where you'll be able to create accounts with Gorilla Desk. You might be able to go on a discounted rate, and you might be able to grow your business. They grow with you. So they let you have, I believe, a few a few customers up, maybe, up to maybe 50 for free, and then as you grow, you start paying a monthly rate, and you start growing with them, and they they adjust accordingly. Now, these programs, when you create the account, the cu- you can set it for the customer to receive a text. You can set it for the customer to receive an email. Um, when they when you complete the service, the service ticket gets emailed to them. Then they receive a separate email, or sometime in the same email, they'll receive both. They'll receive the service ticket and the invoice. They can click on and pay right through there. And it goes through your your site. So some people accept through Square, where you can put your Square information, or Stripe. Uh, we're going to discuss payment processing in another in another episode. So now we went through education. We went through presentation. Now we went through paperwork. So now you covered paperwork before meeting the customer, after meeting the customer. The customer knows that you're knowledgeable. The customer knows that you're presentable. Now the customer needs to know if you're prepared. Now, all this is nothing if you don't have what you need to complete the service. Now, as an experienced technician, if I don't have something, there's always an alternate. There's always something else that you can do to get something done to achieve your goal, to get rid of the, a particular pest. Okay? Now, we can't go all over all of that right now. But here are the main things that you should always have. A B&G, glue boards, ant and roast gel, at least one can of aerosol. Uh, the aerosol should be with the uh, rotating tip where the tip has the wand. So you can put it in fogging mode or in stream mode. Okay? So you can use fire back. You can use side cake, You can use D-force. It depends where you are. There's a lot of strikers, a lot of different things, and um, you should have that. Then a vacuum. Vacuum, uh, we talked in previous episodes about using vacuums for roaches, and uh, in future episodes we're going to talk about using vacuum and steamer for bed bugs. So you don't need to have a steamer. If you do have a steamer, you can, get, you can start out with a low one, okay? So here are the steamers options. You can have the handheld steamer, small little one, 150 bucks. You can get it for less. But trust me, they break. They start to leak. They might just not turn on after a few months of use because they're not meant for commercial use. They're meant to be used once in the morning for five minutes. They're not meant to be used for a bed bug job for 30, 40 minutes at a time, and you keep refilling and using it all day. So a steamer vacuum, okay? And, and gloves and face masks. You should always have these, these items right here. Now, that paired with uniform, with the paperwork, with the documentation, 
with the um, with the education on all the products that you have, all the products that the customer has, um, you know, what's out there in the market. There you go. You have the top four things. Now, the fifth thing, the fifth and final thing, and one of the most important things is to make a connection with the customer some sort of way. Do your best to make a connection with the customer. Please have them remember your name. Do your best to have them remember your name. Um, always say thank you. If they offer you a drink, you take it. If they're offering you a drink, just saying it just to be nice, you'll be able to pick up on the cues as you do this longer, as you're, you stay on, you know, on the field longer. You'll be able to pick up on the cues when they're just being polite and they're saying, hey, do you want a drink? Because you're really there for, to work. So you can't accept everyone's drink because then you're going to have to use the bathroom all the time. And you can't keep using customers' bathrooms. So, but when they genuinely want to push a drink on you, when they're uh, – older person and they're they're all by themselves they tend to want to give you they want to push you a little bit harder for a drink you know they might be a little lonely you you might have to carve out an extra five minutes to have that drink and talk and you know you tell them hey i have a couple of kids if you have kids don't lie because then later in the future they're going to ask and you're going to forget what the hell you said so listen you tell them the truth you ask them about their lives people love to talk about themselves you let them talk, and then you say, it's really nice to meet you. I hope this problem goes away. I'll see you again next month. But if you need me, you can always call the company, and they'll call me, and I'll be right back, okay? Have a great day. And then you give them the little warning, hey, first three to five days, you might see some activity, but that's completely normal. But if you see anything after that, give them a call, and I'll be right back. All right? Communication. That is very, very important. On a, on a technical level, on a technician level, and on an office level. Major corporations, when you call a big company, you don't get to speak with your local branch. You don't get to speak with your technician. You can't have your tech. Hey, I can't call Terminex and say, hey, can you have Caesar call me? I need to ask him a question about what he did in my house. In small companies, you can. And in small companies, if you want your company to grow, you should definitely make that happen. You can't tell them, hey, you can tell them, hey, we, we can't give you the technician's phone number, but we can get relay your message and he'll definitely call you within an hour, within, uh, you know, you give him a time frame. Or you can call, you, you can put him on hold, call the tech and say, hey, what, when do you want me to tell him you'll call him back? And then make sure the secretary calls that tech and reminds him, hey, did you call that customer? And keep that phone number written to the side to make sure you're on top of it. It's communication is one of the main things. I've gotten so many customers because, hey, Terminex won't call me back. Oh, Terminex called me back after two days of waiting, and they want to schedule me out for a week from now. They called me, and I serviced them the same day, the following day. And this is with follow-ups as well. When they call for – after I get their money, when they call for a follow-up or, uh, or anything, after they've been my customer for a year and I'm not getting any extra money out of them, and they call, it's still the same thing. If I have availability same day, following day, I don't leave it open for a new customer. I take care of the people I have, and we make it work. You know, half the time when you're taking care of a new uh, of a recurring customer, you already know their house. You've been there a million times. You know where to go. You don't have to stay there talking to them for 30 minutes before you start. They know you. You say hi. What's the problem? And you guys walk to the problems. Make sure you're always moving. Moving to the area. Sometimes they want to start talking to you for 30 minutes in front of the kitchen counter and the problems in the basement. No, walk to the basement. Oh, where is it? Oh, downstairs. Oh, let's go have a look. And then you talk as you're going down to the basement. And you knock two birds with one stone, okay? Don't make them feel rushed, but make sure that they, they, make sure they know you're listening, but make sure that they, they also see you working, that you're not just standing there. All right, thank you for listening. I appreciate you guys. Please be safe out there. Um, Pest Startup 101 podcast. The visual for the YouTube is going to be coming out very soon. But these episodes are all going to be up. They're up. Some of them are up, but they're all going up on YouTube as well. As these episodes are released, they go up on YouTube. And I appreciate everyone listening and supporting and subscribing. Uh, please comment. Follow us on Instagram, Pest Startup uh, 101. 
All right. Thank you.